This is Business for Breakfast. It is 821 here on Money Radio 1200. I'm Jeffrey O'Brien. And I'm Francoise Rhodes. The Dow is up 53. NASDAQ is down 2. S&P 500 is up 3. And taking a look at your futures, crude oil, $103 a barrel. Gold down 4 to 1320 And your Dow Jones futures up 59. And S&P 500 futures are up 3. All right, so uh, we've got all sorts of uh, ethics-based stories coming up here in the next segment. But right now, we're going to talk to Dr. Adriana Sanford. She's a professor to over 1,600 MBA and undergraduate students at the W.P. Carey School of Business at Arizona State University. Good morning, Dr. Sanford. Good morning. The big uh, question right now, with a lot of the moves that are being made by the government and by the large corporations to help stop corruption and uh, to, to help protect whistleblowers, could you talk to us about the role of the CECO? Sure. The importance of this position, of this role, is really, really front and center at this point. The CECO is the Chief Ethics and Compliance Officer. Some companies only have a Chief Compliance Officer. Other ones have the title of CECO, Chief Ethics and Compliance. These programs are really skyrocketing within companies. You know, you see J.P. Morgan is planning on doubling the size of its compliance program. They plan to spend $2 billion on compliance for 2014. And this is happening because we're seeing a lot more investigations. The DOJ and the SEC are really cracking down on companies. All right, well, tell us about this new legislation that's coming out and some of the legal considerations that our companies might be facing. Right now, we're seeing the Dodd-Frank legislation. This new legislation actually has quite a bit of meat to it. It has 16 titles and requires the regulators create over 243 rules. And some of the most significant rules in there recently are like the Volcker Rule, which actually looks at financial institutions and making sure that banks are restricted in certain ways from making speculative investments uh, that don't benefit their customers. So we don't have another financial crisis. Another important point is the whistleblower bounty program. That allows a person to come forward and actually get a reward if they bring meaningful information to the SEC. The SEC has actually established an office of the whistleblower. So tell me about the general counsel's legal dilemma. Well, the problem is right now with this new legislation, we see that you not only have to know what's going on today, but you have to plan ahead for what's coming up in the future. And a general counsel, when you're having a company that has operations overseas in different countries, must comply always with U.S. law if you're a U.S. multinational or you're a U.S. citizen, but also you must comply with a foreign law and the regional anti-corruption laws. So there's a heck of a lot that the general counsel has to be dealing with and has to be up to date on all these different issues. The dilemma he has is sometimes the laws in the United States require one action, and the laws such as the Gatekeepers Initiative in another country will tell the general counsel something different, and he may be subject to fines or sanctions or even jail time if he doesn't comply with those laws. So right now the general counsel is in a very, very difficult position, and as a result of that you're seeing some companies are actually splitting up the compliance department, and even in some cases, the HR department, and giving those roles to individuals, the lead role in those in, in these departments to a lawyer as well. Dr. Sanford, uh, do U.S. prosecutors also prosecute an attorney if they are somehow involved in money laundering or violate other foreign laws? They do. They do. The, the U.S. did not adopt the Gatekeepers Initiative. The Gatekeepers Initiative, which a lot of countries have, basically says if there's money laundering and you know about it, you are a gatekeeper. You as an accountant or you as a lawyer must come forward and must disclose this to the government of that foreign country. The U.S. did not adopt that. However, if there is money laundering going on and you suspect it, you may even be grabbed by U.S. law, but certainly by some of these other countries, if you do not disclose this information. There, there is the conflict, because under U.S. law, you've got the attorney-client privilege, and under these other countries, the gatekeeper's initiative may put you in a very difficult situation where you may end up with jail time if you're not disclosing information and this company is not taking action. Well, we see the stories in the news all the time, so we know there's certainly a need. But why all of a sudden is the SEC taking such a stance? Why are, why are they being so aggressive? Well, because the scandals are popping up, because whistleblower tips, people are coming forward. 
And the SEC has realized that one of their biggest weapons in the fight against corruption and enforcement are whistleblowers. This is why we now have these bounties for whistleblowers. The SEC is trying to find them and asking for help. Most of the cases that come to the DOJ are from whistleblowers. They're not the companies coming forward and saying, hey, we made a mistake. All right, we only have about a minute and a half left. What do you say to companies that have no compliance officer, simply believe they're not necessary, you know, because they provide internal training to their employees, and well, we're keeping an eye on everything. What do you say to them? Well, the, the problem with that is that this function is a multipurpose function. I mean, these people, this department, will evaluate the company policies, the internal procedures, and make sure they're sufficient. Uh, they look at the compliance programs. And they really develop the training and make sure that people understand. It's shocking how many employees really don't understand uh, their company's code or their procedures. With the new whistleblower legislation out there, you're going to have employees coming forward and wanting to disclose or going to the SEC. You as a company want to have individuals there. You need to let HR know what's going on because usually these individuals go to the HR department first. And you need somebody in charge of compliance. All right. Well, otherwise... That- it's going to be more costly for that company. All right, that's all the time we have for this right now. Dr. Sanford, uh, we'll look forward to talking to you about this again uh, very soon. It is now 8.30 here on Money Radio 1200. More business for breakfast coming up. Some more stories in the world of ethics. That's right. Fascinating. Not a day goes by these days, right? You've got Money Radio 1200.